Welcome to Coffee with Biking. I am Mike. Cheers. And today we're going to go into the complete guide of the Bible. Seeing God through a blind man's eyes. John 9 2 Rabbi his disciples asked him why was this man born blind was it because of his own sins or his parents sins Jesus and his disciples returned to Jerusalem to celebrate the harvest time feast of tabernacles while walking along the disciples notice a man born blind they asked Jesus, who's to blame for this man's suffering? Since many rabbis of the day teach that suffering in God's, is God's punishment for sin, that's a theological blunder that Job's story set straight. According to many Bible experts, Job suffered, though he did nothing to deserve it. In the case of a child born blind, some rabbis blame the parents for biblical support. They point to Exodus 34, 7. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children and grandchildren. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations. But this verse more likely means that a parent's sin can affect the children as it would if a parent gambled away the family savings. God holds people accountable only for their own actions. As one prophet put it, all people will die for their own sins. Those who eat the sour grapes will be the ones whose mouths will pucker. Jeremiah 31.30 A man can be born blind for many reasons. For example, lack of nutrition during pregnancy, problems with the delivery, or <clears throat> inherited diseases. One disease is LCA, or Leber Congenital Amaurosis, recessive genes which have to come from both parents cause light sensors in the eyes to malfunction. There's still no treatment for this. It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins. Jesus answered the disciples. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. And that was John 9, 3. Prophets had said that when a Messiah comes, he will open the eyes of the blind. Plaster that he applies to the man's eyes. Then he tells the man to wash it off. Prophets had said, as, said that when the Messiah comes, he will open the eyes of the blind. And that's Isaiah 35, 5. And that's when Jesus does. He spits on the ground and mixes up a tiny mud plaster that he applies to the man's eyes. Then he tells the man to wash it off in the pool of Siloam, fed by the living water of a spring. Perhaps Jesus used these two techniques to help build the man's faith. Many people in ancient times taught that spit had healing properties though many rabbis taught that spit was ritually unclean. The running water of a spring, however, washes away ritual uncleanliness. Jewish leaders interrogate the healed man because Jesus healed him on the Sabbath, a day when many rabbis insist that doctors should rest from treating the sick unless the patient is in danger of dying. Some leaders condemn Jesus for breaking this rule, 
that they've established, even though the rule isn't in the law of Moses. Other leaders agree with the hilled man. Ever since the world began, no one has been able to open the eyes of someone born blind. If this man could, if this man were not from God, he couldn't have done it. And that was John nine thirty two and thirty three. And right here it talks about Jesus, the great I am. Jesus tells people he is, who he is using seven dramatic one-liners, each pointing to God. Every statement begins with I am. That's God's name. When Moses asked who he, tell, who he should tell the enslaved Hebrews in Egypt, he sent him, Egypt had sent him, God replied, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you, Exodus three fourteen. I am the bread of life, John six thirty five. The source of every believer's spiritual life. I am the light of the world. John 8, 12. The source of spiritual insight and direction. I am the gate for the sheep. John 10, 7. The doorway into the kingdom of God. I am the good shepherd. John 10, 14. The one who knows his sheep and lays down his life to save them. I am the resurrection and the life. John 11.25 The one who not only gives people life after death, but is the source of eternal life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14.6 The one who not only shows people the way to God and salvation, but is the way. No one can reach the Father except through Jesus, the bridge between heaven and earth. I am the true grapevine. John 15, 1, the source of spiritual nourishment for everyone connected to him in faith, just as a grapevine feeds water and nutrients to the branches. I love you all. Stay blessed. Stay caffeinated. And stand strong in Jesus. Let him lead the way.